Here are some organizing tips for you at the end of the school year. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. You know, we often think about beginning of the school year, I need to get my ducks in a row and get everything organized. But there are some things you can do at the end of the school year to help you with that new re-entry the next fall. Here to join me with this discussion is my friend and co-worker, Laura Pitney. Hi. Laura, the organizing guru. Maybe. <laughs> I'll go with that. Let's talk about end of school year. What are some things, rather than just say, woohoo, we're done, throw everything in a closet and go outside, what are some things we can do now that will help us when it's time to start up again? It's a great question. Um, there's a couple ways to approach that. Um, you can say, you know what, we're going to put it all away. I don't want to see it. I'm done. <laughs> we are over it. And not even think about it for the summer, you know, which is that some that may be what people want to do just because they're so burnt out they're just they just don't even look at it but if you do that come time to start again you might feel overwhelmed so that's the point of this conversation but if you want to pack it away and never look at it again for or not look at it for a couple months that's okay i want to give you permission to do that <laughs> that may be what you need um some of the cleaning out and prepping for your summer break that's a, some for some people that's very healthy they feel like there's closure there they they see everything they've completed it's a happy thing to do um for some people you know it's you know what we're just going to pause this we need to set it aside we need the break and then they're ready to jump back at it in the fall so there's a lot of uh catering to the type of person you are so you need to acknowledge really what's going to help you be able to detach for a little bit so that you can come back at it maybe with a happier spirit <laughs> or, um, you know, sometimes the breaks are good. So you just got to figure out your personality. So um, the backstory of that is we've talked about before is things should have places or homes. So for me, when it comes to the end of the school year, I, it makes me really happy to put everything back in its home or on the, on its, in its place on the bookshelf. So the first thing I do is I sort through things that I know are going to be reused, whether it's reused during the summer as like free reads or free time, or if it's going to be reused next, next school year or reused for another kid in a couple years. Anything that we're probably going to touch again at some point, I usually put it back in its home on our bookshelves. So that'd be things like coming to my mind would sure. be your book of centuries sure. that's continuous, yep. your nature notebook, because yep. you're hoping the kids are going to use those over the summer even. Yep. Um, what about living books? So uh, I categorize my books. I keep mm -hmm. them by topic or time period yeah, I do on too. my bookshelves. So um, if they want to read those during their summer or free breaks, I let them, I mean, go for it. Okay. So I um, they don't usually, <laughs> but sometimes there'll be uh, something will trigger a memory or an idea, and they'll want to go find that chapter in a previous book they've read. So, so you're talking about previous read, previously read books, correct? Not books that we're going to be using for the coming up time period, and you don't want them to read it now because then right. they won't right. want to read it again later. Yeah, so those are on my shelf, but usually. Um, they don't have any interest in the ones that we haven't gotten to yet just because they don't know what they are. Or like you said, you know, I want to make sure we have it for our scheduled school time. Yeah, I had two separate sections. Yeah. Like, this is mom's section. You may not borrow those books without asking. Sure. Um, and so that would be the upcoming books that I didn't want them to have yet. Right. And then there were other bookcases in the house that were like, Yes, those are free reads. Go for it. Yeah. So we could, as you said, a place for everything. Sure, yeah. sure. So I find that I, I basically go through any of the supplies that we had, we just finished up with and decide what goes back to the bookshelf or to its home. And then there's lots of um, consumables, if you will, maybe copy workbooks or um, projects that they've done. Um, written narrations. Written, yes, all of that passages, kind of stuff. Yeah. That truly is assigned 
to that school year, it may not be a resource that they have to get out again anytime soon unless they just want to, you know, look back at something. So, um, so I sort, I basically sort through everything and either it's going to be keep to where we can have access to it or something, a pile that I'm going to store. And so I just keep a running tub, like a clear tub with, I mean, you can get them at Walmart or wherever, but a clear tub. And I put uh, a sheet of paper in, on one of the skinny ends of the rectangle that, and I label it uh, 2020, 2021, whatever the school year is, um, to where all during the school year, if it's things we finished with that, you know, I don't, I legitimately don't need again. It goes in that tub and then come the end of the school year when we're cleaning out our cubbies or our baskets, if it's things that need to be retired that we're not going to access again, it'll just all go in that tub, all kids. So um, I have just found that easy for me. So in my attic, I have, you know, however many tubs, but I can see where they're labeled just in case I ever need to go back to it or pull something out that, you know, as an example, to a younger kid that maybe one of my older kids mm. did, so I can have easy access to it. But instead of doing it per kid or per grade, it's just like a family tub for all the work we completed for that school year. And that's that has worked well for me. Um, I have moms that do keep a tub per kid. Um, and so it may be a collection of multiple school years in the tub, but the point being you no longer need that stuff in the center of your home or in the center of your schoolroom, it's a good thing to clean out and put it away. Um, I think there's this fear that the homeschool police are going to show up at your door and you've got to prove everything you've done for all times homeschooling. Um, and that that's a legitimate thing. I mean, I want to show that we were truthful and we're credible with what we're doing in our home. So I don't necessarily want to get rid of it. Um, but my motivation is more for the keepsakes versus I might get in trouble if I don't have it. Um, another tip would be to make sure you're writing maybe your child's names on things and maybe the, the month or year that they completed it or set it or How do you remember it. that at the end of the year? Well, I try to do it all along. Oh, okay. So, okay. you know, yes, because <laughs> you just have, sometimes you have these things that your children spent a lot of time and effort on and you're like, that's amazing. And then you you don't know what it is. And you don't remember what it is. Yeah. And, you know, you want to be a good mama and treasure it forever. But um, you may not know what it is. So if you have them tell you about it, um, maybe after they leave the room or later, flip it over, write it down, <laughs> put a little date on it. That way, if it ever comes up again or 10 years from now when you're looking through the box, you can flip over to the back and be like, oh, yeah, this was the narration on, you know, the pyramids or whatever uh, the drawing or project was. So that's helpful, too, especially if you have lots of children, um, is just to make sure you're writing the date and maybe what it is because you won't remember. <laughs> so now this sounds like keeping all these boxes, especially if you have one for each child, yeah. it sounds like it could take up a lot of room yeah. in the house. Do you have, do you keep one for each school year or do you just keep rotating out that one year? I think that's just a preference for the family. Um, I personally keep one per school year. So um, once they, I'm trying to think, whatever the year was, 2013, 2014, whenever I started that. Um, so I have however many boxes in my attic. And so I do have an attic, so it's easy to store them in there. Mm. Um, it's been rare that I've had to go back in one of them, but there's been times where the kids want to look back through it just for like, you know, a trip down memory lane kind of sure, thing. Sure. So that's one reason why I do a box per school year, because otherwise I would have four boxes times however many years we do the school homeschooling. So it just would add up. Plus, when you really think about the things you're actually keeping, it's not a whole lot. You're not keeping every single correct, thing. Correct, correct. So like I said, it's some of the consumables, some of their fa my favorite projects in art, or I may have them choose, you know, what are your top five uh, art projects from the year? You know, maybe just keep a few of those, not all 30 of them. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, it's that, that selective, um, the selective ones that really mean something to them. Um, I also have a friend who kept 
um, a three ring binder for each kid. And so um, she kind of had like a, a homework turn in box, if you will, for anything that they were finished with. And maybe either she needed to look at it. It was just kind of a system she had in her home. So after she looked at it or if the kid said, this is something I really want to keep, she just kept a three ring binder for each kid and punched holes in it or put it in a sheet protector. I mean, there's not a, a whole lot because, um, you know, it just depends on uh, what you're um, engrossed in that year. I mean, it may be more art heavy one year, but it may be, you know, a composition notebook for written narrations of the next year. So it, it depends on the, what grade yeah, and level yeah, your child's in, too. Yeah. Things would change. Yeah. yeah. The, the point being is what do you do with all the stuff mm -hmm. and the things that you know, you feel like you should keep, but you don't necessarily feel like it's important. You know, it's just it, it's just finding that balance of what works best for each family or for you as the mom. Like, I like to know that I kept some things. I don't necessarily have any sentimental attachment to it, but it, for my kids' sake, if they want to remember something or if they ask me about something that they were really connected to, I love to be able to go pull it out. Personally, it... I could just throw it all away, <laughs> I don't, but I don't want to do that to them, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so having that box per school year really helps clean out my schoolroom or clean out my kitchen or clean out whatever cabinet I'm using. That way I feel like it's a tidy space. And when I start planning over the summer, maybe start collecting supplies and resources, I have a new uh, cleaned out place to put those things. So when it comes to... August, September, whenever you start back for the next term, you know, whenever that is, um, I don't have to clean out and then prep for the new. The cleaning out is already done. And so it's just a happy place for all the new things. A couple other things came to mind. One is that um, I am very much a minimal yeah. clutter you in my house. never. Yeah. <laughs> so rather than keeping the physical object, I would take a picture mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, that's a great way. Although it's not the same for some people. You know, yeah. some people are very tangible. They want to hold it. And if it's a book or something, of course, you can't just take a picture of it. Sure. Like if your child writes a whole story, you'll yeah. want to keep the whole thing. So, But a picture might work for artwork mm -hmm. or something like that, depending yeah. on the situation. Sure, that's a great idea. Or if you don't yeah. have room in your house. Sure. Uh, so pictures might be good, or keeping a digital portfolio, yeah. if you will, something yeah. like that. The other thing that came to mind is I school year-round, mm -hmm. and so I don't really have a set in June I'm going to do the clean-out mm -hmm. so that in August I can do the reload, you know. Um, it almost has to be an ongoing thing, I guess, Yeah. rather than... although. Even if you go year-round, there are planning times. Sure. So sure. so when you get to that planning time, you might just do a mini clean-out right. to right. set yourself up. Well, all along the school year, there might be things that you complete, or maybe you fill up a composition notebook, or maybe you do finish um, a copywork notebook or a math notebook, and you have to get a new one. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the old one? Mm -hmm. It needs to have a place to go versus just taking up room on your shelf. So even if you do school year-round, you're still having that ebb and flow of, oh, we're go going on to the next thing because we finished something else. You know, just the timing, like you said, does it have a distinct start or stop? But you do need a place for those things that you finish. Right, right. So, so that tub. Yeah system yep works well and one thing i i will say you know during the school year i might end up with a stack of things that eventually need to go into a tub and then i may not realize i need the tub until my stack gets too high <laughs> so you know it may just be as simple as starting a completion stack somewhere um, sometimes it might be a, a designated spot on your bookshelf, or I know I had one on the top of my bookshelf, and then it, I didn't like to see the pile, so therefore it triggered, oh, I need to go get a new tub for the school year. So, you know, if you just are conscious of that um, cleaning out all the time, then, you know, you're going to realize you need a place for that. So I, I just think it's kind of naturally what happens anyway. It just needs to eventually get out of the room or go into storage kind of thing. Good, good. So decide what's going to go into storage. Mm -hmm. Decide what you're going to keep using over the summer. And 
make room for the incoming stuff yeah. that you're going to be yeah. using in the fall. Yeah, and then troubleshoot. You know, when, when you pack away stuff and you start thinking, oh, this really worked well or this, we had a, maybe a trouble area as far as maybe too much clutter in one spot. You know, once you clean out, it kind of gives you a clearer vision for maybe tweaking some systems or storage uses, you know, in your pantry or the bookshelf or the cabinet. So even just getting that stuff physically out of the space kind of helps you reset mentally about how you want the room to flow and function. So even that kind of refreshes you for the next time you start back. Good point. Thanks for these great tips. <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. We'll see you next time.